who in the world leaves their job at Google as a software engineer, which is one of the most sought after job? Like, give us the tea. Tell us what exactly happened. Why did you leave? Golden handcuffs is when a company is, is great and they give you a lot of perks, but that makes it really, really hard to leave. It's literally like handcuffs, but goals. You were in two different teams working as a software engineer. What was your tech stack? I think, unfortunately, the news grad and mid-level market isn't very hot right now. We interviewed for 10 companies. I failed a lot of them. Are you like about the 300k hi everyone welcome back to another video today we have a returning guest maddie some of you may have seen her maddie on my channel where we did a video a year ago maddie was a software engineer at google so in that video we learned about maddie's career journey how she actually got into google but recently maddie quit her job at google so when i learned that you're coming to seattle i was like we need to sit down and we need to learn and get the tea <laughs> who leaves their job at google so maddie before we get into it <laughs> That's the team. <laughs> so, Mary, before we get into it, let me ask you, like, how are you doing? How are things going? I'm doing well. Life's on this side for context. I quit my job at Google two months ago. I've since started at Airbnb. It's been great. I've been onboarding a lot. I actually launched my first uh, tiny feature a couple weeks ago. So that's been exciting. But yeah. So oh, so good. That's awesome. You already know she's at Airbnb. So let me just get into it. Who in the world leaves their job at Google as a software engineer, which is one of the most sought after job? Like, give us the tea. Tell us what exactly happened. Why did you leave? That's a great question. I just want to say for full disclosure, I still love Google. I when I joined, I thought I would never, never leave. I left for three primary reasons. Uh, the first one, just because learning opportunity, nothing against Google in particular, but I feel like when you stay at a company for, you know, years, you kind of sometimes become complacent. Mm -hmm. And I actually did switch teams at Google, but that didn't really change the stack as we're feeling. Okay. And I just felt like it was time for something new. The second was honestly just friends. I, you know, the saying, if your friends jumped off a bridge, when you jump off? Yes, 100%. Because my friends are very, very good. They have very good intentions and very good motivations. A lot of my friends, probably for similar reasons, left around last year, like, you know, three, four years into Google. And I felt as though that kind of motivated me and gave me that kick to at least look what's out there. Because honestly, I feel like I suffered a lot from golden handcuffs. Sundus knows this, but... I only... Okay, you have to explain golden handcuffs. What is it? Golden handcuffs is when a company is, is great and they give you a lot of perks, but that makes it really, really hard to leave. It's literally like handcuffs, but golden because you're like, oh, for example... I eat all my food at Google. I do my laundry at Google. I go to the gym every laundry. single day, even on weekends at Google. All my friends are at Google. So that made it really hard to break away from the environment. Right, right. And so, the stocks. Yeah, that's Like too. the four-year grant. So. Yeah, yeah. So that golden handcuffs was really tough to overcome. But I felt as though if my friends could overcome it and they seem really happy at their other companies, mm -hmm. I should at least, you know, give it an honest effort to try to see if there's anything out there for me. Right. And third, I personally was searching for something a bit smaller. I love the fact that Google has so many products, so many opportunities. But I, at some point, felt kind of like I was, you know, a very small cog in a very, very big machine. And of course, Airbnb isn't, you know, that small. But I felt as though it was time for me to just try something new. Right. And those, those three, right? Yeah, it was just time for me to try something new. So in conclusion, still love Google, still use a bunch of Google products. But for me personally, I think it was the best decision for my career at this point. I love that for you. And uh, you have to be really brave to leave like a very cushy job, which I know you did. But let me ask you, like you were in two different teams working as a software engineer. What was your tech stack? And if you can like share one project example, like as a software engineer that you would you did like force people to understand the type of work that you did as a software engineer at Google, that would be really helpful. Yeah, so I was in search. I moved to search ads. My tech stack was actually ironically basically the same as those two teams. Google has a bunch of internal frameworks. So I'm not going to mention those uh, by name, but languages wise, I use a lot of TypeScript and Java in the front end and back end I use a lot of Java and C++. One part I worked on is the image ads on Google.com and on Tropic and Google.com. So if you search for like black jacket or a blue sweater on Google.com and you see like the carousel of images on the top, my team have found that. That is really cool. Um, thank you for sharing that. On the topic of tech stack, I have been testing a new coding AI agent that has made a big difference in my workflow and it might change yours too. It's called Juni JetBrains New Coding Agent. And honestly, it's mind blowing. Juni acts like a pair programming partner, but unlike typical LLMs, it doesn't just generate random code. It actually understands your full project 
When you give it a task, it explores your code base, finds what it needs, and makes smart edits. To test it out, I built a stock index fund monitor tracking Amazon, Google, and some of my other favorite index funds like VTSAX, VTIAX, and VOO. This is the exact prompt I wrote and asked Juni to help me set up the project. And it scaffold through the back end, build the API endpoints to fetch livestock take prices, and even help format the dashboard output into a clean, user-friendly interface. I was personally surprised that it acts like an intelligent coder that knows system designs and runs inspections. Every time Juni made a change, it automatically ran inspections, checking syntax and logic to keep code solid. It wasn't just about saving time, although that definitely happened. Juni also helped me rethink and organize project structure, keeping the flow clean while still hitting high coding standards. You can try Juni by JetBrains using the link in description below. Thanks again to JetBrains for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's go back to Maddie's journey. So let me get to my next question, which is, oh, fine, you left Google, you were brave enough to like, and I guess like your friends inspired you to go to a different company by Airbnb and now that you are there what are the differences that you see between the culture the work environment whatever you can share with us when I was job searching I just wanted to find a company that had good culture had a stack I wanted to work on and a product that I personally use I love Airbnb as a product I haven't booked personally a hotel in since I started Google so in in five years I've literally only booked hostels and Airbnb so you can look I love it. I've been to at least 30 different countries with Airbnb. So right. when I got the interview process, I was like, yes, this is definitely a company I would consider working for. Right. For full disclosure, I haven't been at Airbnb for too long. It's been two months. But something I had noticed, um, Airbnb is remote first. Everyone is by default remote. What that means is even though it offers a lot of more flexibility to live wherever you want and work, uh, conversely, you also don't get to see your teammates as much in real life. I don't think that's necessarily a pro or a con, but that is a big difference at Google. When I was working on search and search ads, I saw most of my teammates at least three times a week, if not more. Mm -hmm. At Airbnb, I've seen half my teammates once. Wow. And when are you going to see them again? <laughs> Probably like in a few months. In a few months. I um, The Bay Area folks try to get together once a month. Yeah. Sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. But we do have uh, quarterly offsites where okay. the team meets usually in the Bay Area. In the Bay Area. Okay. Yeah. You know, like remote job is everybody's dream. Like, I want to ask you, how in the world did you pass the interview, especially in the current job market? How did that even happen? Like, and what tip do you, tips do you have for like people who are job searching right now and for people who want a remote job? That's a great question. Uh, I'll preface this by saying that I was searching for senior level roles. I think, unfortunately, the news grad and mid-level market isn't very hot right now. But for seniors, especially, you know, given my resume and what I worked on, I had plenty of recruiters reach out like opening, so I was able to cold apply to some and also reach back out to the recruiters to schedule interviews. My biggest tip would be just balancing your time. I, for context, I spent like a month and a half studying and interviewing. In that month, I was working full time, interviewing like I interviewed for 10 different companies. Wow. I was traveling because it was like around November. <laughs> right, right. So I personally, if I could do that again, I would spread out the time a bit more. Okay. Unfortunately, I got pretty sick during my travels because I was so stressed out by doing everything. Right. And that's not something I would recommend in the future. But if I could do this all over again, I would be better with time management and I would just make the process a bit longer. Okay. For people who are currently in the job market and you actually recently... Two months ago, you got a job in the current job market. You did the interview prep. How long did it take you? And what is the realistic timeline from starting to hit apply to prep to actually landing a job? From the time it took for me to hit my first apply to getting my first offer, it was a month and a half. I did spend two weeks before applying, just brushing up on lead code and learning all the system design. Okay. So lead code and system design. Did you do any mock interviews? I did some like boarding with friends, but I didn't do any uh, like paid mock interviews. Okay, got it. And then did you fail any interviews? Yeah, I didn't fail. <laughs> we interviewed for 10 companies. I failed a lot of them. A lot of them. Okay. Um, but all you need is one. So for you, if one worked out and one that you really, really wanted, then 
that's all you need. Okay, I want to shift gears and talk about like a video that we did a few months ago. Actually, it was a year, more than a year ago, where we learned about that you work at Google and how much money you make. So the, the amount of compensation that you mentioned in that video was around 300K. That video actually went viral and a lot of the people in the comments are saying that you are lying. <laughs> so I want you to address those people. Like, are you lying about the 300K? I am not lying, to be honest. I actually made more than 300K that video. The reason why I said the range 275 to 300 was because I wanted to be more representative of what engineers are making in the Bay Area in my level, which was mid-level back then. Right. If you don't still don't believe me, you can look on levels.fyi, send this, can put a link. Yeah. It's a website where you can get crowd aggregated numbers from engineers on how much they make, depending on years of experience, company, et cetera. So you can see like the 275-300K uh, number is very in line with what you'll see in L4 at Google in the Bay Area. I also want to say this is the Bay Area. Cost yeah. of living is very, very, very high. expensive. You'll get paid a lot more in the Bay than in the same role with the same years experience basically anywhere else in the world except for maybe Zurich. So in conclusion, I'm not lying. You can look up Level Sack Web, you don't believe me, and I made more than I did in those numbers I said. So talking about uh, numbers, did you get a huge pay bump going from Google to Airbnb? Uh, yes, I did in fact get a huge pay bump. It was around 30%. 30%. Wow, that is a huge pay bump. Did you negotiate? I negotiated a little. Uh, to be honest, I could probably use your negotiation tips. Um, I, I kind of just had one call where I looked up what I thought a senior software engineer everybody should make and gave them like the higher range of those numbers. That's awesome. I love that for you. Yeah, a negotiation. Sometimes it's all about just asking. Sometimes a little bit more strategic, especially in the current job market where you have to get like competing offers and whatnot and have to like create a plan and whatnot. But I love that you did that. You negotiated and you got 30% more, which is awesome. Okay, so one more question that I wanted to ask you. You spent four years at Google. Now you are at um, Airbnb, two amazing companies. Honestly, Airbnb is one of my target companies and now I can get a rep roll. <laughs> but what I wanted to talk about is most people see that you're successful at working at these big tech companies, but a lot of people don't know that you have a very, very, very impressive profile. So impressive resume. So could you like tell us, maybe like give us, a, give us a TLDR, what exactly did it take to before you actually got your first job? You have like tons of internships. You go, went to MIT, but I'll let you tell tell that. So I got my bachelor's from MIT. At MIT, I did actually six internships because I did all summer internships as well as two winter internships and a spring co -op. So our uh, first year, I interned in the summer at a startup. The second year, I interned a mid-sized um, analytics company. Third year, I interned in the winter at Microsoft and at Morgan Stanley in the summer. Fourth year, I interned at Microsoft for the winter, IBM for the spring, and then Amazon for the summer. And then I started Google. Well, and then you got, you, did you get your job at Google through your internship? My timeline was a bit weird in that I decided to intern for IBM and Amazon after I got my Google offer. So those okay. weren't on my resume at all. Okay. It was everything before then. Okay, awesome. So the moral of the story is go to a great school. But if you can go to great school, you still have an opportunity to like get practical experience. Go get those internships because grades are important. But getting those hands-on practical experience that you can put on your resume um, is is definitely the key. And Maddie is actually a living example of what you can do if you go out of your way to get all those internships and build your portfolio. So thank you for being a role model for all of us. Thank you for being a role model for all of us when we talk. About. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Maddie. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And thank you so much for giving us a life update uh, on your career journey. And uh, I hope all of you who watched this video found something useful. And where can they, people find you? I'm on Instagram and YouTube, so feel free to check out my links below. Awesome. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.